Coming up on today's Airborne, Technam shows off their new P-2008 Turbo at the U.S. Sport Aviation Expo. Garmin brings portable attitude and ADS-B data link together. And D-Motors brings a 95 horsepower and a 130 horsepower engine to the LSA marketplace. Welcome to Airborne on Aero TV. I'm Ashley Hale. While at the U.S. Sport Aviation Expo, ANN's CEO and Editor-in-Chief Jim Campbell took the opportunity to check out and fly the Technam P2008. Here's what Jim has to report. Phil, 2014 Sebring Expo is just coming to an end, but as I understand, a lot of good news for you. You've got two P2008 turbos that are signed, sealed, and ready to deliver here on the grounds. The P92 is here. You brought your float plane. Uh, tell us what, uh, what your overview of Sebring was and what your plans are for the future. Well, we're obviously excited to get two P2008 turbos sold. We're also very excited about the service changes that are going to take place in the U.S., some direct interest from Technam, lots more spare parts, and a 10% down purchase program, and I think that's going to prove very popular. The Echo Classic Light, we're going to continue to push that as being the aircraft for time building, give people low-cost access to flying. P2008 Turbo is just the ultimate LSA lots of goodies and the engine in it is absolutely extraordinary very smooth a lot of fun to fly the same thing really applies to the sea sky in a slightly different way a lot of fun to fly pretty good pricing we believe new carbon fiber floats so the future is looking very bright for us in 2014 and with the p2008 the asteray coming online and of course now a very good looking float plane you guys have a full lineup Oh, we absolutely do. And of course, there's the P2010 coming along, hopefully later this year, which is the four-seat fully certified plane. And you need to call me when it gets here. Uh, we will do that, Jim. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Garmin has introduced the GDL 39 3D, a portable ADS-B and GPS receiver, which adds simultaneous display of aircraft attitude information alongside rich interactive mapping, traffic, and weather within the Garmin Pilot application. The GDL 39 3D also features advanced traffic awareness, including target trend relative motion technology and subscription-free weather. The GDL 39 3D portable ADS-B receiver is a solution for pilots who want to receive the benefits of ADS-B in and backup attitude information. The GDL 39 3D WAS GPS can send data to Bluetooth-compatible iOS and Android devices. The GDL 39 3D also offers advanced ADS-B features, including target trend relative motion tracking and surf technology. Target trend provides a faster, more intuitive way of judging target trajectories, and closure relates in relation to your aircraft's position. Target trend is an exclusive feature found only on Garmin products. D-Motors USA and Renegade Light Sport bring us new choices to power our Light Sport aircraft. Available in a 95 and 130 horsepower version, they're designed in Belgium and built in the USA. Jim Campbell brings us the details. Thanks, Ashley. Here on the last day of the 2014 Sebring Sport Aviation Expo, in and amongst all the new planes and new products and new this and new that, is a, well, new engine. And boy, we needed this. Everybody's asking for more power and less expense and this and that, and D-Motor may in fact deliver. D-Motor, built in Belgium and to be assembled here in the United States, is a 95 horsepower, four-stroke, four-cylinder, liquid-cooled engine of 2,690cc displacement, burns uh, MoGas, Avgas, you name it. As we said, it's fuel-injected, electric start. It is a liquid-cooled engine, so as a result, the cooling profile is uh, minimized. Very small, very compact, and get this, significantly less expensive than the Rotax competition. And if that wasn't good enough for you, D-Motor six-cylinder is on the way. They're talking about an engine that will be somewhere in the mid-$20,000 range. Six cylinders, again, four-stroke, liquid-cooled, and more important than anything else, 130 horsepower. You're watching Airborne. More in a moment.
Since 2001, MGL Avionics has produced avionics for experimental and light sport aircraft. The flagship product is the IEFIS, a comprehensive next-generation flight, engine, and navigation instrument designed to meet the demands of the modern pilot. See more at www.mglavionics.com. Are you ready for the next generation of light sport airplanes? Check out the all-new Bristol. Fun, fast, and easy to fly. Learn more at www.bristel.com. Get there faster and in true Italian style. The P2008 Turbo by Technam, the ultimate high-wing LSA, now available with the silky smooth Rotax 914 Turbo. www.technam.net. ADS-B will be mandatory for most aircraft by 2020 in the United States, but you can benefit from ADS-B today with the Bendix King KT-74 Mode S Transponder. The KT-74 meets the global mandates for ADS-B out when attached to a suitable WASP GPS. Welcome back to Airborne on Aero TV. I'm Ashley Hale. A group of local students and two master fabricators led up by a retired executive, have replicated to the last detail a World War II era aircraft, commissioned by the National World War II Museum in New Orleans. The P-40 Curtis Warhawk with 7 White 23rd Fighter Group Burma Squadron, better known as the Flying Tigers, will be displayed in the museum's new Campaign of Courage Pavilion inside the Road to Tokyo Pacific Theater Galleries, which will open in 2015. Chief Engineer Rolando Gutierrez praises his crew drawn from the aviation program of San Diego Miramar College and the volunteers, saying, quote, Not only are they a true team collaborating with one another throughout the project, they also are young and a part of the industry dominated by retired volunteers." End quote. More than 13,000 Warhawks were manufactured, but this aircraft is one of 32 known to remain. The Flyboy AeroWorks team has painstakingly replicated the P-40 using original blueprints from the Smithsonian, diligent research, and ingenuity when nothing else was available. Mead Floats produces a line of amphibious and straight floats, especially for use on light sport aircraft. Shown at Sebring on a Cub Crafter Sport Cub, Tom Patton brings us that story. One of the things more and more people are doing in the light sport market is putting their airplanes on floats. Not only does it give you a lot more options for places to land, but it gives you a chance to see a lot more of the country as well. One of the companies that's doing that is Mead Floats. They were at Sebring displaying a set of floats on a Sport Cub, but they had them for a lot of airplanes. Phil Mead fills us in. These are our 1430 amphibious floats. They are all carbon fiber, composite construction. Um, right behind me, of course, this is on a Sport Cub from Cub Crafters, but they are available for any of the aircraft in the LSA marketplace. We also have a, a 2200 which is coming out this year, and that'll be available for the Top Cub, Aircam, Glass Star customers, based on the same technology that we've used here on the 1430. They'll be available a little later on in the year. This float behind me has hydraulic gear retraction, suspension both on the main wheels and on the front wheels. This package here behind me is 232 pounds, installed on the aircraft with gear advisory, etc. Just go to our website, check out all the specifications. You can find out more about Mead Floats by going online at www.meadfloats.com. At Sebring Regional Airport at the Light Sport Expo 2014, I'm Tom Patton for Airborne. Sometimes an air event simply needs air traffic control for safety. But the current policy of the FAA to levy exorbitant feeds to provide services has left air event producers in a quandary. This year's U.S. Sport Aviation Expo found an answer to this dilemma, and that answer is called Airboss Incorporated. Airboss Incorporated, operated by George Klein, provides control tower services that meet all FAA requirements and in some respects exceed FAA capabilities. Klein showed up at the U.S. Sport Aviation Expo in Sebring, Florida, with a crew of seven highly experienced retired FAA controllers. Klein said, quote, these controllers represent a combined experience of 250 years of controlling aircraft from a VFR tower, 
end quote. The Sebring Airport had a non-operational tower on property, and Airbus Incorporated furnished the personnel and equipment to do the job. They also have a portable control tower that can be used at airports for air events when no tower already exists. Here we have a great example of aviation people resolving a problem for other aviators. The SLSA factory-built version of the Vans RV-12 was introduced last year. Jim Campbell reports on what they learned from the first year's production and where they're going in 2014. Wally, last day of the Sport Aviation Expo here in Sebring 2014, but some of the biggest news has actually been made over the past year as Vans RV-12 not only went into production but put a dozen airplanes in happy people's hands. But what does 2014 portend? We're pretty excited. The first batch sold out in about a 12-hour period. Uh, we, we did the batch idea mainly to where we could guarantee a short delivery date for customers. So now what we've got is a rolling delivery date between April and the end of July. And we've got 15 airplanes there. We've just moved our facility into a new larger hangar. Our production capability in that building is about 50 to 60 airplanes a year. We're at about three airplanes a month right now. We'll be moving to four within about two weeks. So that's where it's at. What have you learned from the past year? We've applied a lot of lean manufacturing techniques and we really look to our employees for their creativity on that. We've seen about a 20% reduction already in production time. We think we have at least another 10 to 15% to go on that. So we're real pleased with the way they're rolling out. Well, judging by the result we flew yesterday evening, you've done very well, and we thank you much. Thanks a lot. You're watching Airborne. More when we come back. Cub Crafters is unique in that we can design, prototype, and certify and put into production an aircraft. There aren't very many companies in the world that can make that claim. Explore No Limits Flying in the newly FAA certified Sea Ray Elite Amphibious LSA. Progressive Aerodyne Sea Ray Elite with a Rotax 914 turbocharged engine is equally at home on the ground, in the air, or on the water. Check it out at www.searay.com. Powering the next generation of LSAs, Renegade Light Sport introduces the amazing LF26. Four-cylinder, water-cooled, direct-drive, fuel-injected, 91-horsepower, D-motor aircraft engine. And yes, there is a six-cylinder version in development. The aviation industry is far too automated and impersonal. Levels of care, service, and focus on customers have faded. Concierge provides premier customer care, leading our industry on a return to service. Find us at www.concierge.aero. Welcome back. If you'd like to suggest a story for Airborne Aero TV, our website, or our podcast, drop us an email to news-spy at aero-news.net. The NTSB has released a preliminary report from an accident which occurred at Aspen, Colorado Airport on January the 5th. The accident resulted in one fatal injury and received additional media attention because it was witnessed by at least two celebrities who tweeted about the crash. According to the report, a Bombardier CL600 corporate jet impacted the runway while attempting to land at Aspen Pitkin County Airport, Sardi Field. There were two crew members and a passenger on board. One crew member was fatally injured. The other crew member and passenger received serious injuries. The aircraft was destroyed. The flight originated from the Tucson, Arizona International Airport. According to preliminary information from the FAA, the flight utilized the localizer DMEE approach. The crew executed a missed approach and it then requested it to be vectored for a second attempt. On the second landing attempt, the aircraft briefly touched down on the runway, then bounced into the air and descended rapidly, impacting with the ground at midfield. More details can be found on the NTSB website. Engineers and safety specialists from NASA and Space Exploration Technologies gathered in Morro Bay, California in late December to demonstrate how the company's Dragon spacecraft parachute system would function in the event of an emergency on the launch pad 
or during ascent. The 12,000-pound test aircraft was lifted 8,000 feet by an Ericsson Skycrane helicopter over the Pacific Ocean. Following Dragon's release, two drogue parachutes were released from the top of the spacecraft to slow its descent, before three main parachutes deployed. The craft splashed down and was quickly recovered by the sky crane and carried back to shore. During a normal spacecraft landing, the parachute will be aided by the Dragon's Super Draco thrusters to provide a soft controlled landing. This redundancy on both the parachute and thrusters is designed to ensure safe landings for crews. And now it's time for our Aero Video of the Week. On the fence watching airplanes take off and land. There's nothing quite like it, and it's literally enough to blow you away. Search Skiathos the Second St. Martin on YouTube. NASA is inviting people around the world to submit their names to be etched on a microchip aboard a spacecraft headed to the asteroid Bennu in 2016. The message to Bennu microchip will travel to the asteroid aboard the agency's Regolith Explorer spacecraft. Those wishing to participate in message to Bennu should submit their name to www.planetary.org no later than September 30th, 2014. After a person submits their name, they will be able to download and print a certificate documenting their participation in the mission. Participants who follow or like the mission on Facebook will receive updates on the location of their name in space from launch time until the asteroid sample returns to Earth in 2023. The mission will assist the agency in the efforts to identify the population of potentially hazardous near-Earth objects, as well as those suitable for Android exploration missions. Well, that's our program. Remember, you can get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Please remember, Airborne is streamed twice weekly and is always online. But stay tuned for a special announcement about some really big news for a schedule this year. In the meantime, join us every Tuesday and Friday for a new edition of Airborne. I'm Ashley Hale. Thanks for watching.